And yes, welcome to the show with everything you could ever want to make or do right at your fingertips. I'm Stephen. I'm Fern. And on today's show... All it takes is a paper plate to get into a spin over today's One Minute Make. Salami or chocolate? Food fingertips serves up a tasty treat. Delicious! And save those drink bottles and get ready for blast off with the fun fingertips Rocket Skittles. And for details on all the makes, you can video the show and play it back, look on our website or grab a pen and paper and jot it down straight away. We've all got one in the corner of the room, a boring, ugly but essential bin. What can you do with it? Well, with a fingertips touch, you can turn this into this. A bonza bouncing boxing boomer bearing a bin in its big belly. And unless you're a crack shot, the boxing kangaroo bin will knock your rubbish ah oh, right back. Nice one, Roo. So if you want to turn your boring bin into a rubbish keeping Roo, all you're going to need is a small bin, a piece of card and loads of this kangaroo fake fur you can buy from most material shops. Now, the first thing you need to do is get your piece of card and put your bin on top of it with the small end facing downwards. Now, you need to draw around the small end of your bin because this is going to be your kangaroo's head. So, just draw it right the way around. There you go. There's your first circle drawn. And now, you need to get yourself a cup and with the big end, put that just underneath your first circle and once again, draw around it and this is going to be your kangaroo's snout. So now you've got your two circles there. You're ready to draw your ears, so you use the small end of the cup now. You want two circles for each ear. Just place the cup on top of your big circle. There's a second one for that ear. Now onto this one. Try and keep them both quite even, the same height. And once you've drawn all your circles in place, it doesn't look much like a kangaroo's head until you do this. You need to round the whole thing off. So just go around the ears like that. Round his head, round his little nose there. Back up this end to the other ear. And there you've got a lovely kangaroo head shape. And now all you need to do is cut it out and you have a kangaroo head like that. You now need to draw the kangaroo's body and the fingertips way of doing this is drawing a snowman shape. So get your bin again, turn it upside down and draw around the top like that. A full circle. And then you need to do another two circles underneath. OK, and you can overlap them in the middle. So here's the first one like that. And the second one, again, overlap them in the middle, draw around. And then you want to cut the shape out, only you'll end up with a shape that looks like this. Now, for your kangaroo's arms, you need a strip of cardboard which is two ruler widths wide and at least twice as tall as your bin. Two of the most important things a kangaroo has is its feet. But how are you going to draw them? Well, just stand on a piece of card and draw around your own. Better still, get someone to do it for you. Oh, Steve, you better have washed your feet, you haven't you? <laughs> I have, yeah. In fact, I haven't washed up one, actually. <laughs> oh, lovely. Um, <laughs> now, here's a great fingertips tip. <laughs> Leave an extra flap at the heel of your foot. This way, it makes it so much easier to attach your feet to the kangaroo's body. There you go, done it, Steve. And another really important thing on a kangaroo is its pouch. Now, your kangaroo's pouch is just your bin. All you need to do is get a piece of cardboard, which is slightly taller than your bin, which can wrap all the way around, and then you can just stick it down at the front. And now for the kangaroo's coat. Use your bits of card as templates to cut identical pieces of fur. Now, you need to cut two of each. This way, you'll be able to cover front and back. Like that. Now, once you've covered all your kangaroo pieces in fur, you can stick it all together. So put some PVA glue on the back of the kangaroo's head and stick it onto the body. And then you can use some pegs just to hold it all in place while it's drying. Otherwise, it'll fall apart. Isn't he looking very cute, Steve? Check him out. He does look oh. so good, doesn't he? Yeah. And now it's time for those all-important boxing gloves. Let me show you how to make them. Grab your bin and draw around the base of it like this. There we go. Remember, you're going to need two of these, one for each hand. Then add a thumb, just like that. And you also want to add a wrist. So there we go, that should do. So you'll have two of them, and then you cut them out. You paint them any colour you want. We've gone for red. And for slightly more effect, to make them look more realistic, here's a great fingertips tip. Just give them a slight bend, and it does work, doesn't it? Then all you have to do 
is stick them on. It's so there's one for you. Oh okay. no, that's one for you. That's okay, let's hand, bung this it? one on that's so I can it. box away his rubbish. Right. Hey, he's looking very good already. And don't forget, we also need to put his little eyes on just to see what rubbish is going to be going into his pouch there. So put his little <laughs> eyes on and then have our nose as well and a little wagging tongue. Oh, really sweet. Fantastic. And there you have it, your very own boxing kangaroo bin. Now, if you fancy making one of these and you video today's show, then all you have to do is watch it back a tiny bit later. Or you could check out our fingertips website. Just click on the top makes and that's where you'll find our kangaroo boxing bin. And we're going to give you our website address at the end of the show. So now you've got your kangaroo boxing bin, you just have to show them off in your bedroom. Now you can have a go at making your very own fingertips cool clown, swamped in baggy trousers. It's still made around a boring old bin, but instead of covering your card with fur, colour it in all different colours. Or how about a bouncing baby bin for your bedroom? All we've done is cover the bin in old plastic bags, it looks like a nappy. Oh, Steve, I think it needs changing. Oof. So don't be a load of old rubbish and give your bin a fingertips makeover. Got a minute? Because this is the part of the programme where we show you how to make something in under a minute using stuff from around your house. Now, today it's my turn to make. And it's my turn to time. And this is all it takes, look. Just that stuff on a plate? Just that stuff. You sure? Yep. OK, well, we're not going to tell you what it is just yet, so see if you can guess along the way. Steve, you ready? Your fingertips are raring to they go. They sound it. You ready? OK, three, two, one, and go. Right, now, what I need to do first is very carefully Make two snips just there on the plate like that. Then turn it quarter of the way around like that. Two more snips and then... You are taking your time. It's ten one. seconds. Do you know why I'm taking my time? What? Because I can. Yeah. All right then. Honestly. <laughs> this is an easy make actually. Is it? Now what you need to do is take the little bits of paper you've just cut out and you can get rid of them and this one as well. That's 25 seconds gone yeah, now. plenty of time in this one. And I can even have a cup of tea and a biscuit. Oh, could you now? If I wanted to. Well, I wouldn't get too confident. That's 30 seconds gone. Plenty of time left. All you now need is a loop of sticky tape. Stick that on and make a hole in the middle of your plate. Bit of modelling clay there so you don't damage your table. 42, 43, 44, <laughs> 45. And stop the clock. 47, not bad at all. Yeah, now let me tell you what it is. What Actually, you... shall I? Okay. It's a continuous animation projector. Now, all you need to make it work is a four-picture cartoon. So just pop that on there. And you also need a very well-lit mirror. Now, all you need to do is look through the top slip at the top picture in the mirror, give it a spin, and it'll animate. And you'll see something that looks a bit like this. Now, if you'd like to make your own animation, all you need are four evenly spaced out pictures. But your animation needs to be ready to start after four cartoons. So this little bird here has got his wings closed. And then they're opening up a bit. And now they're really flapping wide. And then they're closing in a bit again. And there, you're back at the beginning. Now, if you don't want to draw your own animation, you could go onto our fingertips website, where this film and several others are ready to be printed off. So go on, have a bash, and see if you can beat the clock. I really love chocolate, you know. Then why are you making salami? Now, it might look like salami, doesn't smell like salami, and it definitely doesn't taste like salami, because it's chocolate. Chocolate? Yeah, all right, I don't believe you. Oh, it's chocolate. That's lovely, Steve. This part of the show is called Food Fingertips, where we give you ideas for makes that are great to do and fantastic to taste. Now, to make your very own chocolate salami, you're going to need some chocolate, also some apricots, some raisins, some glacé cherries, some mini marshmallows, and some icing sugar. First thing to do is to break up 200 grams of chocolate. Now, two ways of doing this, you could put the chocolate in a bag and give it a good bashing with a rolling pin, like that. Or you could do it the normal way, which is just breaking it up into a bowl yourself, like this. Whichever way you choose, you then have to melt the chocolate. And the fingertips way of doing that is to get some recently boiled water and very carefully pour it into a big bowl about a quarter of the way up. I think that should do just there. Then put the smaller bowl with all the chocolate carefully inside. Leave it to one side and give it a stir every so often. Now, while that's melting, uh, we'll get the other ingredients ready. You need 50 grams of apricots. 
you need 50 grams of raisins, do like raisins. Uh, you've got 50 grams of glacé cherries, they look great. And 50 grams of mini white marshmallows. Now, when your chocolate has melted, like mine has, oh, melted chocolate smells lovely. You want to carefully take it out of the water, although the water should have cooled down by now. And add all of your ingredients and just whack them all in. So we've got the apricots, they go inside. There we go. We've got the raisins, they go inside as well, like that. We've got the uh, cherries, they go inside. And now for a bit of colour, we've got the marshmallows. They go inside too. Now you want to cover all the ingredients with chocolate. So you want to give it a really good stir. Oh, melted chocolate smells lovely. Now, when it's all covered, you want to put that to one side and get yourself a bit of clear wrap. Just place on your board like that. And then blob on all your chocolatey gungy goo into like a sausage shape. There we go. It looks great, doesn't it? It smells so nice, you know. There we go. Last bit on just there. And then you want to wrap it up to give it more of a sausage shape. So just fold it over like that and then just keep on rolling, you see? And to make sure that none of your mixture escapes, just fold over the ends like that, tuck them in, and this one. And then pop it in the fridge for about half an hour until it's cool to the touch. Now, when you take it out of the fridge, it'll be nice and firm like this one. And we want to take off the clear wrap like this, there we are, and then cover it in icing sugar to make it look more like salami look. Then put it back in the fridge for about another four hours. Then just take it out, chop it up and serve it to your friends. Or how about a hot spicy salami, usually covered in peppercorn, but here covered in chocolate vermicelli, a double chocolate treat. Or what about the white version with red food colouring to give it that authentic salami look? Bellissimo! Oh. It's now time for Fun Fingertips, the part of the show where we give you ideas that are easy to make and fun to do. We're going to show you how to make a game that you'll be able to use over and over again. Here we go. Stir right. Oh, not bad, Steve. Oh, excuse me, because you're going to need to drink a lot of these to make your rocket skittles, because they make the main body of your skittles. You just have to fill them with sand to make them nice and sturdy. And the main detail is actually made of card, so all you need to do is get the side of a cereal box or a sheet of card, get a side plate and pop it on top, then... Just draw around your plate, get a nice even circle like that, and then cut this out and fold your circle in half, make it nice and even, and then cut down this centre line so you've got two even semicircles. So just snip down here, and you only need one semicircle for now, so you can put that one to the side. Now fold this one in half, but don't crease it, just give it a little pinch at the top there then you can easily round this off and fold it into a nice cone shape. Get a bit of tape and just stick that there. And now you can put this on top of your bottle and there is your rocket's nose cone. And you've now got to make the booster and the way to do this is by using your other semicircle. Fold it in half to find the middle like you did before. Just give, give it a little pinch just there. There we go. Then get your compasses and uh, Put that in the middle like that. And you need to measure this three centimetres from the edge. So draw it all the way around and then cut it out so you'll end up with a C shape that looks like that. And you now need to put it in place. So wrap it around your bottle and then get a bit of sticky tape and secure it down just like that. Oh, our rocket's really taking shape, isn't it? Look it at is. that. But we do need some more detail. We need some rocket fins. So get another piece of cardboard and draw a nice fin shape like that on your card. And then cut that out and put it onto here. And you can use this as a template and draw around it to make an identical fin for the other side of your rocket. 
So you need to cut that shape out and you'll end up with two symmetrical fins which you can stick onto the side of your rocket. And now you need to strengthen your whole rocket and you can do this by covering it in paper mache. Now it might take a bit of time but when you have covered it all, put it to one side until... It looks like this and then you're ready to get painting it. Now you can paint it any colour you want but bright colours work the best I think. And you can also add a bit of silver detail on the top nose cone here to make it look really space agey. Just whack it on like that. Well, it's great, isn't it? Now, while Fern's finishing off the skittle, um, if you have access to a computer, why not check out the Fingertips website? We'll give you the address at the end of the show, and you can find out how to make your very own set of rocket skittles. Now, as you can see, I've painted a window on the front of my rocket, and on the other side, I've painted a number. Now, this is a really good idea because it helps you to score when you're playing skittles, because the person who gets the highest total wins the game. You could even make a set of giant skittles using two-litre lemonade bottles. My turn! Oh, Strike! Next time on Fingertips, we get ghostly in the garden and show you how to make your very own spooky wind chimes. Cryptic Fingertips puts red cabbage to the code-breaking test. And improve your soccer skills with the help of the fun Fingertips Chipmaster. Well, that's it for today's Fingertips. Now, if you want to make anything from today's programme, then make sure you check out our Fingertips website. The address is on the screen right now. So we'll see you next time for more Fingertips. See ya. Bye-bye. See ya.